Hi, I'm Damon Davis and welcome to One on One. If you know the name Helen Keller, then you know she was blind. What an amazing woman, blind and deaf, and yet she wrote 12 books. I mean, talk about being able to push beyond the obstacles in this life. That's what today's program is about. Your ability that regardless of where you are, regardless of what you're facing right now, maybe a financial problem, maybe a marriage problem, who knows? You're able to see beyond that. You're able to see like the eagle from afar what God has in store for you. On today's program, you're going to meet two very special friends of mine, Kay and Olu Taiwo. They are twins with a unique, united vision to help bring this message of vision to people who need to understand it the most. And on today's show, you're going to hear about a very special book, The Vision Guided Life, that I promise you will help give you the strategy for fulfilling God's destiny in your life. And will help you discover one thing today that will catapult you onto the path towards winning in this life that God says you deserve. Don't go away. Grab some coffee. Tell someone to tune in. This program is designed to be the difference in your life, starting now. You were created one of a kind. You were designed with one purpose in mind. In your talents, dreams, and just one could change the world. The road to destiny, it's never easy. Seldom simple. We have so many questions. Those who have traveled this road, they know the way. One turn made the difference. One idea, it ignited a fire. Just one answer to one decision, one strategy, one solution could shape your thinking and cause you to win today. Taiwo. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. I think it's certainly no mystery for anybody watching that you two look a lot alike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're twins. <laughs> but it's got to be uh, an amazing thing in ministry. Yes, it is. You know, you're, you're both pharmacists by trade. Yes. World speakers. You're authors. That means that you guys are what I would describe as process-driven people. Yes. Uh, you're not caught up in hocus pocus. No. <laughs> no. Factually based to separate fact from fiction. Yes. So this book is not just something that you whip together. This no. book seems to be, as I read it, a journey, hmm. a roadmap well, to help people discover this thing called vision, to help people understand vision, apply it to their life, and see restoration in many parts of their life. And amazingly, I bet you find a lot of people that not only don't understand what vision is, but have gone through life absent of its power. Let's start from the top. What is vision? Vision is beyond just setting goals. We all set goals. In fact, there's a distinction between goal setting and vision. While vision contains goal setting, it goes beyond that. Mm. The mm. word vision means redemptive revelation, which means something is damaged, something is destroyed. Vision sees, sees that thing totally transformed, brought back to its original uh, state. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible opens up with a, a scenario of chaos. Earth was without form and void, but God never left it the way he met it. The Bible says he spoke into it and brought it back to his original intent. And that's what vision does. Anytime there's a vision in place, it never leaves things the way it is. It brings it back to what it should be. So vision is not just, I've got an idea, a dream about the future. It's that too. It's not just, you know, purpose or calling. It's actually a, a thing that brings restoration Absolutely. to something that, as you describe, is void, is empty. Maybe that's a marriage for someone watching today. Yes. Maybe it's a, a job or there's no job. Um, maybe it's a bad report from the doctor. Hmm. They are where they are 
because of life, because of decisions that they've made. And vision is the very thing that can come into their life, you're describing. It can restore their life. Yes. Am I understanding you Absolutely. correctly? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things we talk about in our seminars is the difference between vision and ambition. Now, on the surface, there's nothing wrong with ambition. We all do have ambition. We want to rise in life. Sure. We want get to get ahead. Get ahead. Get ahead. Get beyond where we are today. Nothing wrong with that. But the distinction here is that vision is from God's pr pr perspective. Vision is others-focused. Ambition is self-focused. Because wow. God is always looking out to restore what has been damaged. And so that's what makes it different. So it's beyond goal setting. It just had goal setting involved, but it's always others, restoring people, restoring marriages, restoring people who, do, who don't know the Lord, wow. bringing, them back, bringing them back to the point where they're bought back. That's what it means to, to redeem, to buy back, to wow. bring it back to God's original intent. Wow. Many times people are in perpetual pause mode. Oh, it's like yeah. you're listening to a CD a tape, and all of a sudden maybe someone knocks at the door or the phone rings, and you put it on pause. Now, there may be further uh, instruction on the tape or the CD that you haven't gotten to yet, and the only way to get more information out of what's on that tape is to put right. it back on play. And for some people, that interruption is 10 seconds, and maybe for some people, it could be it could last 10 years. And the pause never comes and never. Sometimes there are distractions in life that sort of and we all put us on them. pause. We all have distractions. And we all have Sure, them. I mean, some people have them because the pause was imposed by someone else or something else, right? Yeah. It all goes back to realignment. Okay. We're all going to have times to pause. In fact, sometimes pauses are, like you said, they, they are imposing us, and sometimes we ourselves, for some reason, can get distracted, get, on, get off track. Error increases with distance from mm. the source. The farther away I get from the source, the more distorted and blurred my vision sure, is. Sure, sure. I, I give an example. I was on a college, college campus some years ago, and I saw somebody from a distance, mm -hmm. and I waved very enthusiastically because I thought it was somebody I knew. <laughs> but the closer we got, I was like, oh no, so that's, not not the person. <laughs> that's not the person. And many times, the farther away we are from the source who is God, right. the more blurred our vision is, the right. more distracted we will right. be. So one of the things we need to do is come back to God and say, God, I, I think I'm, I'm missing it somewhere. Lord, help me. Right. And that's where it starts, with a, bro a brokenness. God would not reject the, the contrite spirit, the one that says, I don't know it. Lord, I think I'm off track. Help me. And I believe that's where, that's where it starts. So if I'm struggling right now watching this program, for whatever reason, you're saying that I can discover, rediscover. Yes, the absolutely. Vision, absolutely. The vision. Absolutely. And in reading this book, I will be able to what? Map out my course to get to where I'm trying to go? What will the book do for me? The practical side of this book is this. When you begin to read, the Bible says that uh, the entrance of his word gives light. And there's nothing like uh, being struggling and then the light bulbs come on. Mm. This book is a guide. So nobody has all the answers, but this book, what this book will do. It's turn on the light. It will turn on the light. You first of all will see what vision is not. We talk about that, eight things. About eight things that what vision is not. Once you're able to identify, oh, I thought this was vision, and you're able to eliminate it, then we delve into what vision is. You know, naturally, I would expect that business leaders watching, pastors, watching, people in position of authority or power or leadership would understand the importance of vision and see this book to be an asset. But what about a marriage? What about a man trying to be a better husband? What about a mother trying to, to be a better parent? You know, what about the average person? Regardless of the roles we play, be it mother, wife, uh, husband, you know, child, Vision helps us to amplify, to, to be better at what, you know, what that purpose exists to fulfill. For, for instance, person A says, I'm going to develop, I'm going to uh, create cups, and this drinking cups is going to serve my family. I'm not going to go to the store ever again to, to buy cups, and so he does that. But person B says, you know what, I'm going to produce my own drinking cups. But I, only, I don't really see it impacting my immediate family. I see it impact my city. I see it impact my state. You That's vision. I see it impact the nation. Mm -hmm. Vision is the scope. So why both Purpose scenarios. Purpose is the same in, in both scenarios. In both, the cup is to drink out of. Got but it. the scope of the vision is different. In both cases, a cup. Yes. But one person had vision. Yes. yes. Saw way beyond the cup. Yes. And all that the cup could, could become. Yes. True. How does it apply to a marriage? The Purpose of a marriage. The Bible says that a man shall leave his father and mother and join to, cling, to cleave to his become wife and one. the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. So the vision is oneness. And, and, and this is very crucial because in other words, for us to become one, 
I'm going to have to die to myself. Right. And so will my, my, my wife. People go into marriage many times not even knowing why they're going into it. Right, and where they're going. They don't have the don't vision. Have the vision. So right. if, if we don't, you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you get there? Yes. And so we have to go back to God, going back to God's blueprint. Marriage is being defined and redefined. Right. But we have to come back to God. What does God say from the beginning? Right. What, was his, what was his heart? He, he definitely didn't have a, a, a vision for a chaotic home That's right. where they're fighting. Yes. So somewhere along the line, I have to ask myself, is my home a picture? Right. Is this what God, if God came down and sat down with me, would he say, so I have to come back and say, what is the original plan intent. for marriage? What is his intent? Look to what God says about yes. what is the vision for the marriage? Yes. yes. What is God's yes. plan for the future right. of that marriage? Yes. Right. And to your point, it's certainly not destruction. No, it's not. God no. is in the restoration, restoration business. business. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. How might you describe how you came about writing this book? This is a big book. Vision's a big topic. Yes, it is. Someone came and actually prophesied on, on us, saying that, that as twins, God wants to do something that complements mm. for his kingdom. It was so timely because at that time, I was uh, a bit shaky. I was like, where is God taking us? Where is, uh, is this something where he's going to do something on this side and I'm going to do something over here? And this prophetic word came at the right time. This lady came up to her and said, don't look at the fact that you're twins as a, uh, something that, that's a deterrent, but rather use it, God wants to use it to complement his ultimate plan. Wow. And so that realigned us back into that focus. And it's so ironic. We write a book and then I can pinpoint from the book what my uh, purpose was. And so wow. that took us down that. And then we started doing seminars on vision and the feedback was tremendous. Has this topic taken you, Olu, is this taking you all over the globe? It, I mean, if, is the world seeking to understand what this thing absolutely. vision is all about? This topic is so broad. It applies to, as you, as you mentioned, family, community, nation, continents. Hmm. It's very easy to look at uh, a continent or a country or, or, or a community and you can see whether or not there's vision or lack thereof. Well, there's so, not. so what, what does it look like with vision? With vision you see order, you see, you see the, the attributes that you see in, in, in God. You see, you see love, you see peace. Mm. And that's every society that really wants to have wholeness, even if they're not Christians, they strive for having a peaceful, wow. harmonious uh, 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 environment because you can't wow. function even in your purpose and vision mm -hmm. in, in the midst of chaos, mm -hmm. at least not for long. Is this something that you can detect then? Uh, I mean, absolutely. Is, is there a rule of thumb? Yes. If I'm saying, yes, there you is. know, everybody watching says, I got vision. We all, we all would believe that we have vision, aspirations, dreams, mm -hmm. hopes, big ideas. But how do you know you really have it or not? When I say I have a vision, is it all about me? Right. Or is it about other people? Right. So you can, you can look at an, an organization and say, okay, this organization, why does this organization exist? If you read their vision statement and all they're talking about, okay, we want to get money, we want to become the biggest company, that's self-focused. That's right. So the test is very simple. Is what I call vision redemptive in nature? And is it restoring? And, and opposite of that is yes. not God at all. Yes. No. So is it safe to say that if someone has a vision, the right vision, what they build will last? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. If they yes. build with a vision that is not God's, then what they build will not last. It won't last because God himself will resist them. So this really is a recipe for parents getting along with kids, kids yes. getting along with parents. Yes. It's Absolutely. a recipe for a marriage being restored. Yes. Absolutely. Because what you're defining is if you, party of two, should come together to agree on what God's vision is for mm. your life, then the natural byproduct is peace, yes. prosperity, yes. joy, harmony, yes. excellence, all of those things that you said vision is, mm. right? Yes. So quickly, what is vision not? <laughs> vision is not ambition. Mm. Vision is, like we mentioned, it's not purpose. Mm. Vision is not charisma. Charisma. Yes. That's Meaning a big one. got great talent. That's yes. a big one. Yes. What is charisma, for instance? Charisma, a person has a magnetic personality, mm. and that is good. It can complement vision. But over time, if, if somebody is saying, is riding on charisma, but don't really have vision, with time, if people are still perishing, it means they don't have any vision. Wow. And that's the universal that's test. That's the universal test. Are, are people, people still, still perishing? perishing? So people watching right now, maybe they have been perplexed, stumped. They've gone through life and it seems every single door that was open has shut. Every single time that things were together, suddenly fell apart. 
it's possible that they had all of the talents, yes. the charisma, yes. maybe even the skill set and the knowledge base, but they lacked vision. Is that a possibility? It's a possibility. Yeah, it's absolutely. Tell me five things that I'm going to discover that's going to shape my life for the better in this book. What vision is, what vision is not, how do we even go into how to discover your purpose and how to write a compelling mission statement. Explain. Okay. You mean, I'm, I'm not, so we're like, we have to write a mission statement for our life you, you, and you, literally you, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good practice. All right. Because in writing a mission statement, there are three components of a mission statement. Okay. There's a purpose statement in a mission statement. There's a business statement. The purpose statement says, why do you exist? Right. Who I am I? Why am I here? It answers that question. Got it. The business statement says how you're going to accomplish it. So hmm. you, you, it, starts get, it, starts, it starts getting you thinking. And, it, when, and when you don't have those answers, you go back to the source. Wow. And then thirdly, a value, value statement. statement. You know, what do I want to accomplish and why do I? It, it answers the question of what exactly, what value do I, do I want to infuse in my world? Is this so process driven that? It, it's, it's, it, 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 it remove it's, the opportunity for faith or? Oh, faith is the glue because without faith, <laughs> you, you can't get anything accomplished. Because right. when we even talk about vision, faith begins where the will of God is known. Hmm. Vision is God's blueprint. And a lot of people that are watching today that God has given them a vision, and what do they do? They first of all look at their circumstance. Immediate doubt. What does God do? God begins to renew their minds, and then faith comes, uh, comes, comes alive. alive. All God wants is us to be positioned correctly yes. through faith. And all God wants to do, or part of what He wants to do, I would submit, is to give us a vision that we could be in agreement with. Yes, yes. Absolutely. The Bible is very clear that He knows the plans that He has for us. And I would say that that is a great creator yes, with is. great vision yes. for everyone's life watching right now. God is a God of process. Mm. And as long as we are uh, stepping out in faith and our hearts are in the right place, He will lead us, even when we might even uh, just on the edge of missing it. He has a way of, of, of bringing of you back, bringing yes, us absolutely. back. That's the mercy of God. So we're all in process. And I want to go ahead and encourage everybody watching this program that, in, I mean, it doesn't matter what you have done, where you have been, God is a God of restoration. God really right. wants to take, he, he has a plan. The very fact you're listening and watching this program right now is in his divine plans. So I want you to just embrace his voice because that, that's what's going to make, make the difference. Eliminate all the distractions around you and, and just say, God, what are you saying to me at this hour? That will make the difference in your life. There's people watching that have a, a vision to do something, a gift to do something, an idea to do something, a talent. Maybe it's to write or to sing or play the piano or build something. And sadly, most of those people will take that vision to the grave. Mm, that's sad. and and. What you're describing is, yes. this book is an opportunity to awaken that Absolutely. vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. To I, reignite the fire. It will. Don't give up. Just hold on, and, but wait on God's timing. Maybe it's not this time and now. tied to the timing of God is the process in which we have become more competent. Because there's a difference between comprehension and, and competency. competency. See, when the Bible says, follow me and mm. I will make you fishers of men. Mm. They could comprehend the following part, but the fishers of men part, over time, they became more competent. Jesus didn't say, follow me, go do the work. No, right. follow me, and in the process, you will become a fisher of, of men. And so when Jesus left, he had completed the process that brought them to a point of competency wow. that they could take on the work. God is a great God. Yes, he is. You know, the good news is God in an instant can put you on the right path and give you the tools that you need to get ahead. He's not looking at your past. God is looking at your future. True. He's not focused on what your vision has become. God's focused on what your vision is, and that's His vision, yes. right? Yes. 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 So that would say to me in this process, you need a tool. Yes, you do. You need a resource. You don't go at it alone, mm -hmm. right? No, no, you don't. You don't get from where you are broken down, shipwrecked, beaten up, life has had its way with you. You don't go from there to here without help. Yes. And I would say that this book is just what the title says. It's a guide. Yes, it is. It is a guide to give you the vision, help you understand the vision, or help you interpret the vision, right? right? True. Absolutely. And then the steps to map out your course. True. 
did I summarize well <laughs> what this book is going to do? Great job. <laughs> <laughs> great job. Great. So how do I apply it? I get this book. I make the decision. It's not a big investment. And it wasn't really for me. It reads really well. Uh, Thank you. And you can tell that you two are the intellectual chaps that put it together <laughs> because it is a very smart book, mm. full of the word, full of principles, full of steps that you can take. Um, and it's not 30,000 feet up. I mean, it's, it, it meets you where you are. The book is written in such a simple way because I like to say I like things made very straightforward and simple. Mm. I don't, I'm not really uh, uh, impressed with things be, being said in a complex, you know, complicated fashion. Where, where only you can understand it. Well, you can understand it. Right, I like well, you didn't write it for you. <laughs> no, yes. you wrote it for Other the people, people that God wants you to reach. And so if I, I like to see things, I like to write things in a way that people, the average person, everyday person can read and run with it. It's a great, you know, bridge builder in communication with your children, yes. you know, with your, with your partner. Yes. The first thing that I discovered uh, was that it's not just a business book. It's actually a book that's designed for everything, including business. Yes, correct. And that's a feedback we've actually gotten. We've had people that said that, uh, they read the book and said they can see the how it applies to individual life, how yeah, it applies to family life. It's, they can, it's, a, it's a spectrum. God's vision is all encompassing. Yes. Good. So that's, that's what it is. You know, writing a book couldn't possibly be easy. So. Is part of vision setting the goals? Is part of, part of vision it, it, you it, walk through it, in your book? It, it, it is. If I'm wanting to write a song, if I'm wanting to write a book, if I'm wanting to build something, create something, if I'm wanting to get a business going, if I'm wanting to find the right mate and keep the mate that I have, mm. does this book help me understand it, 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 the it, steps? Absolutely. It does. It does. Because everything, like we, like we said, nothing just happens. No. So it starts with a vision. It starts with the divine spark. God gives big that idea. Mm. It gives you a big picture. So Lord, I have this big picture. Father, what are the details? What should I do? What should I look for? Mm. God will bring more clarity. And, and uh, just to add to that, when we first wrote the book, it obviously it was in English. But right now we have it in Spanish, we have it in uh, Portuguese, wow. so it's Brazilian Portuguese, and, wow. and it's in the process of being in Russian, <laughs> Russian language. Because one of the things we say in the book is that the platform you select determines your potential reach. Wow. So it didn't all start, when we conceived of this book, we didn't have the whole idea. We didn't have, we didn't have, whole idea. Didn't have the whole vision. We didn't it's have the whole vision. Progressive. So someone that might say, I have no, you're talking about how to guide to the vision filled life. I had no vision at all. Mm. She might not. God doesn't give it to you all at once, is no, what no, you're saying. No, he doesn't. Yes, that's no, exactly doesn't. what we're saying. He might give you a, a spark, and it then you got to work the spark. spark. Yes. And yes. If you work the spark, the vision becomes clear. That's true. So, is, so, so, do you believe that this book could be a the spark, or b the first step towards igniting the spark, or I think discovering both. the vision? I think both. It can do both. It can, for those who are totally, they say, in their minds, I'm clueless. As they begin to read this book and going back to what we said, refocus their vision. And they say, whoa, some people are going to say, wow, I, I finally see it. That's our prayer, really. That's our prayer. That's to pick up this book and begin to read that, this, that God will give a divine spark. Mm. And then also somebody may already be walking in vision already, but it will, it will be an encouragement and also help fine tune. That's, our, that's the, wow. the whole purpose of this book. This book is not a book that's trying to, how do I put it? It gives you a, a perspective of why am I here? It answers the question of purpose too, because purpose really is the foundation for vision. Mm. Once I discover my purpose, then I can see what that purpose kind of in action. And that's, that's cool. what it is. So when you get this book, you're going to begin to think, Lord God, why do you have me here? Why am I here? Then Lord, okay, I know. So some people have, have the, the purpose message has been emphasized a lot. So somebody knows their purpose. So what next? Father God, what do you see? Hmm. this vision accomplishing, this purpose accomplishing. So this is what this book will do. It will help you begin to readjust. Just like when we go to uh, get our glasses, we, those of us who wear glasses, we do vision check. You check your eye and then you read what's on the wall and based on, on that, the, you, they adjust the lens so that you can have clearer vision. That's what, this is what this book Great does. Great analogy. As you read that, this book, you're going to see a vision adjusted. Wow. You're going to see what needs to be corrected in God's prescription. Great analogy. Oh, correct. And correct. If, if I'm to add one thing, I would say it shows you that you count maybe more than you have estimated yourself in the past. That God has a bigger plan for your life and that 
vision is others focused so when you uh, when infused with the vision of God you will see yourself more uh, making a, a greater impact on the people around you so instead of minimizing your importance on the planet you're going to see that God really has a rich plan for my life that's going to touch the lives of people around me God is looking to bless every single person watching it's possible it's probable that's what should be happening in your life your life should not be broken down your life shouldn't be a wreck God doesn't want you to be lacking God wants you to live the life that he purposed for you and that means that you've got to understand what his vision is for your life this book is a easy read but it's a smart read it speaks to the areas of your life that God wants to speak to once and for all and it tells you how to build a road map it guides you to living a life full of vision and I would encourage you to get it into your heart into your home into your hands into your family's hands your life will never be the same with each passing day depression struggle and pain keep you from seeing God's best in life destiny is clouded purpose a mystery and one thing is certain time moves on as the sun rises and the alarm sounds, you wake facing another day with debt the stronghold, health depleted, and relationship trouble choking the life out of you. What you need today is vision. Without it, we perish. But vision is more than just ambition, setting goals, or planning to win in life. Vision is the nature of God in you that can stop the devil's attacks, restore what was destroyed, and where God can move in your situation, transforming your life, putting things back in order, and redeeming the years the locusts have eaten. In the acclaimed book, Vision Guided Life, discover how God has placed inside of you a unique vision to positively impact your world and transform your life in Christ to fulfill your purpose. If circumstances have you moving in circles, if you feel like you can't get ahead, this book by international speakers, lecturers, life coaches, and authors Kay and Olu Taiwo will help you push the start button on life, a vision-guided life. Discover a sense of purpose. Discover the right direction to head in life. Get answers to your calling and reveal what God wants you to do. Discover the steps to take to move from mediocrity, breaking the chains that hold you back and live a joy-filled life. As part of today's powerful offer, Damon wants you to have the entire uncut interview of today's show. Nearly one hour of one-on-one -on -one questions and answers with Damon and his guests, Olu and Kay Taiwo, that walks you through the supernatural breakthrough that vision can have in your life today. Receive the book, The Vision Guided Life, and the full-length uncut interview on DVD, all for your generous love gift of $20. This powerful collection, the book and the DVD, will transform you into a powerful, anointed, and unstoppable force for the kingdom. Remember that your love gift today gets these resources into your hands and also helps Damon to continue to bring guest after guest to you, into your home, that you may discover the steps to reach the life that God has for you. 